Sanjay Panwa is my name, coming from Bastar, where a very strong Maoist movement is taking place. 231 districts of our nation on various degree of violence, and in Delhi too, three districts are affected. SRK's magic is required in Central India. The people who are dispossessed, deprived, saved. We were looking for our two meals when the great Mughals were here. When the British were here, we were doing the same thing, menial servants. Independence has come. We are still looking for our two meals. So please can, get to can, your question. Can, sorry, sir. Can, can Shah Rukh Khan do something for entertainment of these people? Can he make movies for them? Can he bring them up and take them away from the barrel of the gun? It's a tall order to make movies for uh, you know, any specific group of people. But I would like to believe the kind of cinema that I do, which uh, I film, in the film, is the same thing that कि जितने भी लोग हमारे देश के हैं जो दुखी हैं जो सुखी हैं जो खुश हैं जो बुरे हाल में हैं अच्छे हाल में हैं जो शायद अफोर्ड भी नहीं कर सकते बट द डिज़ायर एंड द ड्राइव फॉर वेकिंग अप एवरी मॉर्निंग वेयरिंग मेकअप एंड वर्किंग टायरलेसली फॉर द लास्ट ट्वेंटी इयर्स अबाउट सिक्सटीन आवर्स अ डे इज सो दैट आई कैन ब्रिंग एज मैनी स्माइल्स टू एज मैनी पेज फेसेज एज पॉसिबल एंड दैट इज द गॉड्स ऑन एस ट्रूथ आई डोंट वर्क फॉर एनी That's why I openly can joke about myself the way I dance at weddings, etc. I work in films only and truly so that I can say thank you to all the people who've given me this opportunity to act, and uh, the people of Bastar, as you mentioned, and all the districts who are affected. I would love to uh, do cinema for them, but I truly believe specific cinema for specific people is not what actually makes everyone happy. I should just make a film. Which Im which involves all the kind of emotions, all the kinds of happinesses and sadnesses that appeal to every sensibility. You see, the language, the lines, the heroes, the heroines, the stories, the dialogues don't matter. The stories have been the same for the last hundred years of cinema. What actually appeals to people is the honesty, the undercurrent of common emotions, the universality of uh, uh, the love that we talk about, and hope. So I hope I continue to do that, and inshallah. I will be able to reach out to as many people and all the people in those districts that are affected also. Taking on further from what you're saying, Sharuk, you are one of the highest taxpayers you have been for many, many years. Um, and given the amount of corruption that's going on right now, let me post you if you were prime minister for a term. Let's say you were. What would you do? I would go for a holiday right now. <laughs> in a place nobody knows. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I truly believe, you know, just being honest on our own, and this is a very, very um, big thing for me to say. It's uh, I, I really, it's not in my place to say something like this, but you know me, I'll say anything. So I, I, I truly believe that, you know, just being honest yourself is not an important aspect. I think that the people who work under you in your office, in your house, they also follow the same system. Just not being uh, knowledgeable about the wrongdoings in your office uh, does not in any which way uh, not make you responsible for it. I think uh, if I was the Prime Minister, which is not a bad idea as we sit here. <laughs> but if I was the Prime Minister, I would make sure, and as I'm sure our Prime Minister is doing, he's a gentleman, he's a wonderful gentleman. I think absolutely above corruption and honest, uh, great gentleman whenever I've met him and I think uh, he must be doing is to just be able to figure out, look at every aspect of the people working under him, under the government, take them out. It will take time. I think what we need to do personally is give time. You know, it requires a lot of time to weed out corruption. It's in the veins and nerves of all of us. It's a part and parcel of our lifestyles. So I, I would try to do that. But uh, it's a very tall order and I think we need to give any government which comes into power or which is in power some time to be able to weed it out. As always, honest and simple solutions from Shah Rukh. I could do chaiyan chaiyan in the office otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at the back there, the lady at the back there. Please, let's have a mic there. Hi, Shah Rukh. My name is Rita Madan. Hi, Rita. Uh, you just mentioned that you work 16 hours a day to bring smiles to people's face. I want to know who brings smiles to your face. <laughs> My in-laws are here, so I won't tell all the names, but... <laughs> No, but my kids do. 
my kids bring a lot of smiles to my face. I think I, I feel really thrilled and happy because uh, when I was being trained as an actor, the first thing I thought of was that I should be able to hold the attention of youngsters, little kids, because they are the most honest audience that you can get in the world in every aspect of uh, public appearance. So I'm very happy that my kids find me interesting. Uh, my daughter's here in Delhi and she just sent me a message, though she loves my mother-in-law. <laughs> But she just said, I'm getting very bored here, Papa. Come and entertain me. So I'm going to go and entertain her. My kids do, do truly bring uh, the best smiles that I have ever experienced in my life. Yes, the gentleman right here. Uh, while he gets ready, I'm going to ask a Twitter question because we've had a flood, as you can imagine, of tweets. Um, Shitish Chaudhary wants to know, do you wish that you could have your privacy back? No, not at all. I'm, uh, yeah, not at all. I, I, I say this, I said this in one interview in my documentary that all my life I have worked so that I can be recognized. I want thousands of people to scream my name out when I get off the airport. I want girls and little children to tear my clothes off. <laughs> I've worked very hard for this and then I find it very stupid when I see stars wear dark glasses to hide their faces. <laughs> I think I want to be recognized. Given a chance, I'd give my left arm and right arm to be recognized and have no privacy. I want to be known, I want to be disturbed, I want to be troubled by as many people for as many years possible. That's given a free license to everyone here to take photos with him afterwards. Yeah, and, and, and like this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just saw that, yes. Shah Rukh, my name is Sunil Sethi. I'm from the Fashion Design Council of India. You sounded too serious, and we like you as you are now. Do you agree with the other serious people in your fraternity who say, don't call us Bollywood, and yet after so many years, you're not part of an industry, so-called? No, no I'm, I'm, I'm not a serious guy at all, but I, you know, whenever I go to a serious function or a gathering like the India Today Conclave, which, which has, I've been told is a very serious gathering. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm really restricted by my wife. She says, don't speak stupid, don't try to be funny. People who are funny are considered jokers and jesters. They're not taken seriously. So let me tell you, I'm, I'm a highly intelligent guy. <laughs> I, I'm a, I mean, I'm so smart, I could be smart as he actually, but I, I need to control myself and um, I have no problem. See, Bollywood is now, uh, you know, you could fight this earlier. I used to find it strange that it's just a, you know, kind of a, <clears throat> like you have Lollywood, you have Tollywood, you have Bollywood and, you know, you just go on like this. Uh, <clears throat> but now it's been accepted. It has actually become more of a, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, it's, it's like a noun now. You know, it's just a term. I, I don't take it too seriously. I myself call it Bollywood. When I say Bollywood, I mean Mumbai, actually. The Indian film industry is the right way to uh, talk about cinema in India, I think. But I don't take it very seriously now. And, 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 and uh, ironically, I think the word Bollywood has been patented by an American company. We Indians miss the boat there too. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, last couple of questions. The gentleman here, please. Hi, Sharuk. I'm JC Ladda from the Aditya Birla Hello, Group. Sir. Uh, see, what has been the most uh, challenging moment in your personal life which impacted you professionally? Um, I, I, I don't know. I think uh, uh, I have had a series of injuries in the last six, seven years. I've uh, had a big spine surgery. I've had this uh, major shoulder surgery, a couple of knee surgeries, ankle surgeries. I'm uh, like now kind of <laughs> so many titanium and uh, you know funny screws in my body all over. Um, I think at times uh, the only thing that I don't like being taken away from me is my energy and uh, active lifestyle. I, I'm, I'm frisky and uh, is that the right term to say? Yes, absolutely. You can say anything. <laughs> okay, it's, it's okay. Uh, I, perky, didn't, I, I, didn't, yeah, perky, I didn't mean sensually, I meant frisky <laughs> otherwise. You I, meant it all, Sharuk, don't okay. lie. Okay, quail knows. <laughs> but I, I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I like an active lifestyle. I like to work very hard. I, I consider myself what I call the labor class. I'm hands-on kind of person. I want to keep working the whole day round. And uh, when that is taken away from me, I think it affects me a lot mentally. It, uh, it's, uh, it gives me a lot of sadness, and I think that uh, percolates down to my family. And I kind of make everyone very sad and disturbed, uh, including my in-laws. Everybody gets like very disturbed and then everything very slow and sad in my house. And uh, yeah, that affects me. So that has been plaguing me for the last uh, 
um, uh, you know, five, six years. But now I have scientifically resolved it through astrology. I'm wearing this ring, <laughs> which they claim I will never get hurt again. <laughs> so now I know that, you know, uh, being the scientific mind that I am, I've sorted this out. Uh, we have a corner from the in-laws corner, uh, a question from the in-laws corner. Uh, I'm not privileged enough to be Shah Rukh's in-law family. Uh, Shah Rukh, my question... If, if you have a pretty daughter, we can try. <laughs> <laughs> I thought For your sake, I'm you. ready to try. <laughs> mom's <sitting> right there. <laughs> okay. Um, Shah Rukh, would you agree that even at the worst of times in the political history of India, Bollywood has managed to stay away from communal polarization and its films uh, have been consistent in giving the message of communal harmony, oneness of all beings, no matter what their religion, race, caste. If so, how and why? What do you think is the secret? You know, it's a... Um if, if you can make it as simple as, uh, you know, a gathering of friends or even a family get together where you don't have friends but acquaintances and you sit down to have a good evening and uh, enjoy with each other. I think the Indian film industry and Bollywood, uh, I'm part of that more, so I, I can speak on those terms. I think when you start making a film, you kind of become that kind of family or friends or acquaintances where the goal is only to be able to entertain. Of course, the reasons for that, for the producer is to make money, for the actor is to become a bigger star, for the actress is to do well. You know, everybody's got their reasons. But the final goal is to make the same film that will please a lot of people. So the bottom line for our success is a lot of people should like what we are saying. And, you know, Indian cinema is very unique that it has to be liked by the two-year-old in the house and the 80-year-old grandmother also. So it is kind of a variety program. It's like a cabaret where everything has to be put in. And I think it's a very intelligent uh, director or producer who gets everyone to, uh, you know, like a film like Three Idiots or say Kuch Kuch Hota Hai or say Munna Bhai. You know, these are really loved films where everybody has loved them. And, you know, in that goal or in the strive to reach that, the small issues of, uh, you know, which community we belong to, what religion, what color, what caste, I think it just gets completely trampled. And I think, as a matter of fact, in India, if it comes down to normal people, that really is the truth of the matter. Yeah. But I think politicians, as I've always said, and I think all of you know, do use religion as an agenda. And I think it is the lowest, cheapest, dirtiest trick in the world to use religion <laughs> or communal... Uh, uh, it, it really is. I mean, you know, uh, I really believe that uh, the younger people, and I like to believe I'm also kind of that side still, uh, but I, I really believe that there should be a, a set of people amongst all of us who should get together. And I think this is very utopian maybe, but I think the agendas of leadership need to change to more development, studies, education, uh, women upliftment. I think we just keep talking about it, but these are all social issues we, which we keep. But I think they should become major political issues instead of saying Hindu, Muslim, black, white, colorful. I, I think it's really, really low down and dirty. And I, I, you know, I'm married to a Hindu lady. I'm myself a Muslim uh, by birth, and uh, you know my kids know all the religions. I'm very proud of that, and I think uh, that's the way they should be brought up. And anyone of any religious faction, if has an issue with that, I'm ready to face them. I, I'm, I'm listen. Uh, this is religion is a very personal thing. It's about faith. It's about your, you and your God. And I don't think anyone in this world has the right to come in between you and your God, uh, especially politicians. Uh, the gentleman has had his hand up all through your answer, so I'm going to, and after that, that, I'm really sorry I see all sorts of hands, but you're going to have to accost him on your own. Namaste. So your name is Khan. My name is Bjorn. I'm uh, from Denmark, so I should not know you, but I do. <laughs> Worse still, I'm in your age group, so I should ignore you, <laughs> but I don't. So, uh, so there's quite a few of us who know you and do not ignore you, um, and we now know that you are known for your films, for your sense of humor and for your, well, scientific approach at times. <laughs> now, how would you like us to remember you? Um, I, I don't know, I'd, I'd like to be, uh, uh, at this age, you know, I'm, I'm passing through midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm turning 46. <laughs> so uh, there are things I do which uh, everyone tells me is midlife crisis-like. Uh, but I have started doing one of the things is to think that how do I want to be remembered, if at all I do good enough work to be remembered. 
Um, and I'd like to be remembered with one line that, uh, uh, sorry, speaking in third person, but here is Shah Rukh Khan. Uh, he should be remembered for the fact that he tried, and he tried very hard in whatever I did, so yeah. Okay, the very last question, I'm going to give the privilege to the organizer, Kalipuri. So a lot of people, I think, uh, want to know, and I'm going to ask it, is there a six-pack still hiding underneath that sharp suit? Yeah, the four-pack is there. Oh! <laughs> uh, six I say it, in our Delhi, what do you think of the R.C. Kya, what do you think of the R.C. Kya? And if you have to take more interviews, then I'll show you that too. Thank you, Shara. Again. Thank you very much for coming, entertaining, delivering and sharing your scientific views. Um, <laughs> no, but, but seriously, to come and actually step up to the occasions, like people say, oh, you know, Shah Rukh is too serious. Well, this is the other side of Shah Rukh. He is definitely a thinking man. He speaks honestly and he speaks simply and I've never known him not to speak the truth. So thank you, Shah Rukh. Thank you very much and thank you, audience. And thank you very much. I, uh, a lot of my friends here, so I want to thank you. I want to thank Arun Saab again and uh, Kali and Koyal and Kaveri and everyone involved here and all of you for being so patient and listening to me and uh, lots of lots of friends and uh, so lots of love to you and thank you for giving me this uh, opportunity. I really appreciate it because it's very seldom that I uh, get to take myself seriously. So <laughs> thank you very much for seriously listening to me. God bless you all and have a very, very good life. Thank you.